I'd like to call to order the City of Saugatuck City Council Workshop for May 8th. If the clerk could please call the roll. Anderson? Here. Baldwin? Here. Dean? Here. Gardner? Here. Muncie? Here. Stanton? Here. White? If a quorum. Okay. Um, agenda changes. Uh, we do want to switch items 6B and A. So item 6B will go first and then item 6A um, just to uh, allow some of our guests to be able to depart. Um, so can I have a motion to make those agenda changes? Uh, Mayor, I'll make a motion to move item discussion item 6A to 6B and discussion item 6B to 6A. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor say yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, this is on to public comment on agenda items only. If anyone would like to come to the podium, uh, you certainly may. And if you could state your name and where you live. Yes, hi. My name is Nancy Kimball and I reside at 550 Spear Street in Saugatuck City. I'm speaking in support of agenda item 6A, <laughs> which is the intersection improvements at Lake and Blue Star for the multimodal trail. I'm a member of the Saugatuck PPW and also um, on the board for the Friends of the Blue Star Trail. So I'm very familiar with this subject. Um, the agenda item really includes two components. One is movement of the pallet sign and the other one is the installation of a traffic signal at the intersection. When the PPW reviewed these items at three of our last meetings, we, uh, we had two priorities really. The first was to minimize the impact to the pallet sign. And the second was to ensure safe passage for cyclists and pedestrians as they cross Lake Street um, with the new trail. So we worked with C2AE, the engineering firm that was selected to design the trail. And the recommendations that are in your packet basically reflect the results of those discussions. But I just wanted to make two comments, one regarding the changes to the pallet sign. We recognize that this sign not only welcomes city people to our city, but the iconic artist palette is emblematic of our city's, our city's artistic culture. So accordingly, there will be no changes to the sign itself. It is simply being shifted 4.8 feet further away from Blue Star Highway to accommodate trail construction. We're also um, recommending at this point that we take the opportunity to upgrade the landscape materials. So the sign itself won't change, but we'll spruce it up just a bit. Second, our second priority was safe passage across Lake Street. And so the committee is recommending installation of a traffic signal. Two traffic studies have been conducted in recent years and both, conduct, both concluded that the intersection warrants a signal. Both al also acknowledge that this would be of greater importance if, we, if and when we construct a trail. So I urge you to support signal installation in conjunction with trail construction, which will occur in 2025. And this will improve safety at this in busy intersection for all. Pedestrians, cyclists, and drivers, too. Uh, and it will be cost-effective to the city to install the signal during the actual trail construction. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on agenda items only? Okay, anyone online? You see anyone? Okay, great. We will move on to item uh, discussion items. Uh, so it will be uh, item 6A. Intersection improvements at Lake and Blue Star for the multi-model trail. Page 43 in your packet. And Ryan, you want to set that up? Sure. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> and really, uh, Nancy set it up uh, well during her uh, her public comments. Uh, as I think all of you are aware, the, the Friends of the Blue Star Trail, the, the city, the township, uh, Douglas, everybody's been hard at work for um, uh, several years now and, and uh, working on extending the uh, the Blue Star Trail. There were some separate elements of that project that uh, really kind of fell on the city, and that was uh, intersection uh, improvements uh, at, at Lake and Blue Star. And so back in December, uh, you approved a, a general services agreement with C2AE to um, uh, provide some proposals or designs to, to move, uh, potentially move the, the pallet sign to make more room for the trail, as well as uh, work on designs uh, for the installation of a traffic signal at that uh, intersection, which currently is not signaled. Um, so through several meetings with uh, the Parks and Public Works Committee, um, they, they are recommending the, the plans that are uh, included in your meeting packet. 
Uh, it, it does involve uh, moving the, the pallet sign um, slightly, 4.8 feet, uh, to make some more room for the trail. Um, there was another option that essentially would have been kind of what I refer to as the, the Cadillac plan that would have had kind of greater wheelbase um, uh, compliance for that, that intersection, but would have involved uh, moving the, the, the pallet sign extensively uh, and, and installing new um, <clears throat> Um, support for that area as well so um uh, more costly um more impactful uh was more concerning i think to the parks and public works committee as they kind of took a look at that option um so they've they've, they've recommended the option that's before you um as Ms. Kimball uh, noted, uh, some new landscaping, very native materials. Those were things that the Parks and Public Works Committee uh, prioritized and wanted uh, for native landscaping to be utilized. And then uh Based on the, the the intersection layout, which is essentially staying the same, um, same lane configuration, um, but uh, C2AE is working on uh, uh, traffic signal designs that are consistent with a rendering that Fleece and Vanderbrink um, uh, did several years ago when they were, were studying this particular uh, intersection. Um, so as a refresher, back in, in 2019, Fleece and Vanderbrink, uh, you know, indicated that there was possibility to, uh, you know, signal this intersection, especially considering that a, a new trail would be going through in this area. And then in 2021, the Road Commission actually had an engineer uh, come and study this area, as well as the area where the roundabout's going in now. And, and they, in fact, recommended a, uh, a traffic signal at this lo location, given the, the traffic warrants uh, and and uh, the fact that a, a the trail is going to be extended through this area. So C2AE at this point has indicated that um, I think all the improvements really, if, if we line them up are on, and work around the same time, are, are probably grant eligible. Uh, the one piece of that that's not a grant eligible with the, the TAP grant and the DNR grant that we have currently is the traffic signal and the estimated cost for that at this point is $200,000. But the good news is there's another grant opportunity just came up recently that we think is a really good candidate. Um, and so... Uh, we have uh, a five thousand dollar contingency in the the general services agreement that uh, we're asking for your approval essentially to to utilize that towards C two A E preparing an application package in a, in the hopes of obtaining grant dollars. If you don't get grant dollars as, as we discussed during your budget work session, uh, we'd ask you to to budget those dollars uh, for next year. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Yeah, Madam Mayor. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, it, Pedestrian safety and bicyclist safety is of incredible importance to me personally as a cyclist who rides that intersection often in all seasons and traffic patterns, et cetera. Um, I'm very supportive of finding ways to make that more safe for people that presumably will be using it more often. Um, I am concerned about the cost of $200,000. It's good that there's a grant opportunity. I would like to see more about that because I am not comfortable spending $200,000 of the city's money on traffic control at that intersection, that seems a lot of money. And um, maybe I'm maybe I'm in the minority on that, but this is a project that um, I know has been discussed at length at Parks and Public Works. I would really love to see us have more information for people to understand. I don't wanna be caught in a position of people coming back and saying, well, no one ever told me about this. No one ever told me about this. This is something that I think people just need to have more information on in any way we can get that to them. Um, so that would, that would just be my comment. I'm supportive of improved safety for sure, but I, I still am, still analyzing this. Mayor, if I may. Yeah. Um, uh, this is of some urgency. Uh, the deadline for the grant application is, I believe, by the end of June. Mm -hmm. uh, so I take this as a matter of urgency. Um, I think we have a very good chance at a grant. And uh, I, I also like the idea of having a plan B at the ready. We have the contingency to put together a bid. Um, I'm prepared to uh, vote yes on this on Monday. Madam Mayor, yes. I've been through this extensively um, as a um, CPW chair and also prepared to vote yes on Monday. Um, I do agree that it, it, it's urgent that we, if we're going to explore this grant, we need to get after it and um, and uh, optimistic. We could, you know, grants are always uncertain, but um, I think that uh, there's a community support also for a, a light there and it, and it should happen. So I'm prepared to vote yes on Monday as well. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, it, just a clarification, the vote Monday would be to authorize the disbursement of funds for the grant application, correct. not for the actual traffic light proposal itself. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. So, I mean, essentially, I mean, you're, you're going to, I mean, the final decision on, on doing a traffic signal is ultimately going to come when, you know, we do bids and, and bring back, you know, the bids to you to see if you want to approve the project. So, um, 
another question on that. Is, is there a reason why that wouldn't have been part of the original grant from the state for the project? Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And maybe Ms. Kimball has a little more of the history on that. If you're willing to, to hear from her, uh, she's always with the friend of the Blue Star Trail, might know more of that history than I would on that. Yeah, but, if, yeah. Nancy, if you wouldn't mind coming to the podium. I wasn't part of the tri-community uh, committee, but what I was told was they very much wanted the traffic signal, but, you know, Holly Leo was in charge of the, was the chairperson at the time, and Holly's concern was just that she wasn't going to be able to get the council's approval for the traffic signal um, in time for the grant application to go in. So only because she couldn't guarantee a signal, they had to make the application without it. Okay. And the, it wasn't that they didn't want the signal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I live on Lake Street. Uh, it's impossible to make a left hand turn there the whole summer. So we find alternate routes. And uh, obviously, our whole town is full of alternate routes right now. Uh, but it is, it's a dangerous intersection. I hate to admit this. My son got in a, a collision at that intersection. Um, it's, it's more that it's just heavy traffic. And just making that left-hand turn from Lake onto Blue Star and then trying to make the left-hand turn from Blue Star onto Lake, it just it just becomes a bottleneck. And I think with the roundabout slowing traffic down, that's going to help a little bit. But I also think um, by having that trail there, we just want to make sure that it's a safe spot. Um, I would love to get the grant. It'd be fantastic. Um, but if not, I'm, I'm still in favor of spending the money to put a traffic light there. What, um, another question on this process, and again, maybe we'll get more information as this matures a bit, but were there other alternatives to a full full on traffic signal for that intersection, flashing red, yellow, flash, uh, perhaps a, um, I don't know, there's a number of different solutions to protect safety or protect, protect, protect pedestrians and bicyclists? Just curious. Yeah, so there, there was a, a kind of a, like a pedestrian island in the middle of the intersection that, that was considered, uh, you know, DPW expressed some concerns of how that, that would impact snow plowing. But we, we do have uh, Jared Sikor, uh on with C2AE, um, who's been hard at work on, on this with his team. But Jared, any other insights that you might be able to provide on that? Just based on the traffic studies that we were provided, um, you know, our recommendation would be for the, the full traffic signal. And I, and I did just want to clarify, um, with the uh, with the agreement that was put in place for the uh, general services to do the redesign of the pallet sign in the intersection, um, that does include the the traffic signal design. So again, that um, the contingency being voted on would just be for us to, um, you know, for our time material to work on the application. Whereas the traffic signal design is already part of that uh, general services agreement. Whether you guys decide to move forward with construction of that or not. Okay. Anyone have any questions or? Um, I will say that uh, <clears throat> about a year or so ago, when this was brought up, the idea of having traffic lights there, I wasn't crazy about it. You know, I just, you know, think about that flow of traffic and keep that money coming into Saugatuck, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, uh, I've got to tell you, uh, I've spent more time thinking about it. And I think it's really smart. Um, not only you talk about your son, I know our flower shop. I had an accident there with our with our truck there about two years ago. Um, and you're right. It's impossible to turn left there. Mm -hmm. um, it really is. And um, yeah, I know. In fact, if I have to turn left, I always drive down. Uh, well, I'll take uh, Holland. Mm -hmm. yeah. or, uh, I used to take Maple, but I try to stay away from Maple now. <laughs> no, I... um, but I've got to I'm really I'm for I'm for this idea now, um, now that I've had more time to think about it. Um, I think it's in our best interest, um, and uh, you know how I am. I've been complaining about us spending money from, you know, from everything. You guys all know um, I don't like to spend money, um, but I think this is something smart for our community. Okay. I love the idea of um, making sure uh, we can send these renderings out to the public if we had a way of um, just making sure that people see this because I think the renderings are beautiful and really kind of, oh, that's what it's going to look like. Like, especially where you see the one with the lady with the stroller mm -hmm. on page 47. No. What one is it? Yeah. 48. One yep. Yeah. Um, you know, that's just great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. for people to be able to see what it's going to look like um, and then to show uh, the one with the traffic signals, I think people 
you know, once they see that, they'll say, ah, that makes sense of why it's needed. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and and it's not as intrusive design as I think people were were talking about when they talked about this a year ago, when we all talked about this. Um uh, you know, the the sign, I mean, if you look at the picture, it you can hardly tell it's even moved, right? Mm -hmm. you, you still got that angle that it was before. It's just moved over a little bit. So I, also, I, I think that was one of the biggest concerns with folks because a lot of people hold that sign near and dear to their hearts and they just want to make sure that, you know, that's taken care of. Yeah. I also like the way that the lights are not on wires, you know, they're on posts that go right. up. And I think that that's really modern and safe looking. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like they're going to blow off in a storm or whatever. I think that it's, a, it's, it's much more um, aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And, and I, I know I've seen over and over again, in the last couple of years, these bikers um, that, uh, and uh, I, I don't bike on that part of Blue Star. I'll bike over to Douglas and back, but I very seldom go on that part. But you see them, you see them on their bikes and, and you know, traffic's going 45 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, and they're stuck on that right side, mm -hmm. you know, and they're just like, you know, there's literally that much room for them. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think this is a solution and um, I support it. Yeah, again, Mayor Stan, thanks for making that comment about getting this information out to the public in every single which way we can, because it's important for people to start to think about what's going to be a change. And I think that's the problem that the city has had in the past is just getting people ready for these changes. Not that we're not willing to take the action to make the changes necessary. It's just getting people ready for it. And even though the ultimate design may not look like this, uh, this is still not done. I think just to get people on the page on this, I think is incredibly important. And our public meetings are wonderful, but and not everybody goes to public meetings. So we just got to make more effort. All right. Anyone else want to say anything before we move on? I think it's a dangerous intersection and I fully support getting light there. So. Are we going to lose our status as a one-stop light town? <laughs> I think we might. I think so. Hey. Oh, no. Well, no. There's, 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 there's these two out there. And just oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, that's yeah. true. Um, no, and while I, you know, I think about this and, like, I don't know that there's really that much more traffic flowing through this intersection than there have. I mean, I've seen, you've seen pictures of cars backed up over the bridge from, like, decades ago yeah the cars are so much faster mm -hmm. and huge mm -hmm. now and they're just they are more dangerous to pedestrians and especially if we're bringing in we're actively encouraging pedestrians to participate more actively in that space yeah um i think we owe them a, mm -hmm. a good look at some safety so um yeah we all know that that's an impossible intersection to turn right not so yeah looking looking forward to to this i also like the polls yeah um, is in budget. Is this something that has to be approved through uh, Allegan County Road Commission to put up lights? Is it something because you know I understand that they have the ultimate authority for Blue Star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the short answer is no. I mean, so in, in talking with the the Road Commission and this intersection was within our jurisdiction and said if you want to signal it, you can signal it. Okay. So. Anything else? Uh, just one last question in terms of the project itself. So we've got the next stage of this going to the bridge and across the bridge, which was highly controversial when it was initially brought up several years ago. Has there been discussion at this point about what that's going to look like, what's going to be kind of what that, because that was very controversial before. So yeah, she can answer that. Um, so we're going to be keeping within the the lane sizes that the that the sheriff had asked for. I'm sorry, the fire chief had asked for, and there'll be a bike path that'll be a little bit wider um, than it is currently on our side of the bridge. There's a there's a rendering in there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, that, that, yeah. There's not a rendering of that in here. That was something that we pulled up. The Parks and Public Works Committee had a, oh, a question about that as well. Yeah. So that's kind of yeah, part that's of the overall that. trail design. Um, but yeah, essentially three lanes will be maintained. I know the fire department, I, or at least I understand the fire department had concerns about uh, being able to, you know, uh, get through there easily. Um, so um, three lanes are going to be maintained. They, it'll be um, smaller than they are now, but um, but there will be three lanes maintained and then obviously the additional space for trail space. A little bit wider for the, and yeah, the bikes. And, and, and I ride that, as I mentioned, all the time. And one of the things that's going to, I think, come up is, and as I, I haven't mentioned to Scott Herbert, but the shoulder on the bridge gets all kinds of debris on it. 
So you actually, if you ride your bike in that, you run a risk of getting a flat tire. So right. I have, I actually ride in the fog line and the lane of traffic to stay out of it. So that's just something we're going to have to consider going forward is increased use. Potentially, you're going to have to be different maintenance is going to have to be done. You know, either a street sweep or something's going to have to be done to clean it up. So that's just a, that's just inherent with this. Yeah, it, it, the plan is for it to be um, curbed as well. Um, so that's still going to fly some of that. Tell you from experience, yeah. Curb. There's also also live discussion on what type of delineator is is put along there to you know kind of make it more visible to a motorist that there's yeah, a bike there's... lane you know Doug, douglas has their own version uh it's still an open discussion if we want to copy that cheaper alternative or look at something that's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing across the bridge uh granted it will be more expensive mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah um we, we've talked about in the past about this bike path about maintenance, you know, that is one thing that we do have to think about, you know, in the long run is maintenance. That's wood. That's a wooden bridge. And so, you know, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, it will have to be rebuilt. Um, is there, a, and I'm not, I, I'm sorry that I haven't gone to a lot of the uh, meetings with the uh, Blue Star Trail group. Has there been a concerted um, uh, conversation or effort to uh, talk about uh, continuing raising funds uh, uh, when it comes to maintaining this path? That's a good question. Because, I mean, you know, the whole path all together. I know you guys are raising a lot of great money, but are you going to continue raising money for uh, upkeep and maybe, you know, things like that? Nancy, you can, you it, can go up to the podium. For the benefit of the yeah. Zoom folks. We're going to continue raising money so we can extend the trail because right. the trail, you know, the, the plan for the trail is to go all the way to South Haven mm -hmm. and connect to the Cal Haven Trail. Right. And that's actually one of the reasons we were able to get the grant, you know, was because of the connectivity to that that ultimate trail. We don't think we're going to be able to raise the money to maintain the trail. OK, so. Uh, so, yeah, we've talked about it oh. and really we're we're struggling right now just to keep, you know, keep the money flowing. So, sure. so our goal is to really, we're working actively right now on that next stretch, which would go from the, from, you know, where Douglas has built the trail as far as they've built it on Wiley. Right. Then uh, we'll go all the way down to M89. So that's our next focus, but we're asking the, basically the local jurisdictions to take care of the main. Okay. Thank you. I mean, this, will, this, this will be subject of a discussion. I mean, what we have before us is fairly simple and straightforward. I think there'll be a lot more discussion, but as far as I see it, this is a critical piece of infrastructure for the city. Um, I, I, I love the idea that it connects Holland to South Haven, but re what really excites me is that it connects Saugatuck to Saugatuck. Mm -hmm. um, that's really what we're, for me, the prize is, uh, keeping our citizens safe, connecting our community better, and frankly, I, I also connecting us to, uh, to our neighbors. Uh, you know, because people do travel between the two, between the, Saugatuck and Douglas. The lifeblood of a community is connectivity. It it's, fosters sure, good yeah. relationships. It fosters, yeah, and, getting out, yeah. walkability. I mean, that's it's, right. it's it, that's any again, urban planner will tell you that that's how you keep like the fabric of a community mm -hmm. tightly knit is is making it highly walkable and inaccessible. This is this and is and, and the growth of Blue Star with the businesses and talking to Daniel DeFranco, it just keeps going and mm -hmm. go, going. So I think it's I think it's great to have alternative transportation. Um, as that corridor grows. Mm -hmm. to, to give our residents and our visitors the ability to, to cover that last mile of their journey in safety without having to use a car mm -hmm. uh, could be a game changer for us. Uh, so I'm very excited about this. And I think you all know I'll be a very passionate advocate of this as we move forward. Okay. I would just add on to that is that this effort needs to be in conjunction with additional efforts by the city to, this will take people around the city we need to encourage people to drive into the city on their bikes, walk, whatever they're doing. And I think Holland Street's a great example. Lake Street's another example where we could be doing some more work to actually define bike lanes for people to actually stay on the road versus the sidewalks. So I would say if we're on this path, no pun intended, that we really need to think about bringing people into town on their vehicles or pardon me, on their bikes, whatever, walking, however they're getting into town. So we need to think about that in conjunction with this because we, if we want to get people out of their cars and on their feet and on their bikes, then we need to encourage them to come into town that method. Yeah. This will take them around. 
Yeah, especially mm -hmm. on Lake Street. I know that looks like it could be really challenging, but boy, we see those bikers on Lake Street. In fact, <laughs> we talked about CJ and Kimberly uh, live on Lake Street, and they saw the uh, the nineteen the girls, nineteen <laughs> uh, that, that were that were riding down the street. You know, they're literally blocking traffic. But uh, I mean, that happens bike, all the time. Yeah, they're a bike rental company um, bike. rented nineteen bikes to a group of women that were in town, and we saw them everywhere. <laughs> um, it was fantastic. Cool. It really yeah. was. Okay, you guys. Well, I think we can move on to the next item on our agenda. That would be item 6B, Airport Property Proposal from Outdoor Discovery Center. This is on page three. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, so maybe six weeks ago now, we, we last workshopped uh, the airport property and, and we discussed uh, that, that a donor had come forward uh, uh, with the willingness to um, uh, pay out or well, donate one hundred thirty thousand dollars to the city uh, to fund the the outdoor discovery center proposal that would um, develop trails and signage at the uh, the airport property, create a trailhead, um, kind of create a more formal parking area, uh, combat invasives and restore habitat, and then potentially place a conservation easement over a portion of the property. And so we discussed at your last meeting that uh, a lot of work had been done last year uh, by the city and, and various groups uh, to kind of study. Uh, the old airport property and council uh, asked uh, staff at, at that last meeting to kind of uh, gather a little bit more information about what, what the, the thought and proposal is as it relates to the conservation easement what those options are um, talk with the donors to kind of see if they have any particular expectations in, in, in giving uh, these types of dollars and then uh, uh, evaluate some of the impact that it, you know, installing trails might have on the Department of Public Works and their their operations going forward. So I, uh, the mayor and I met with uh, the donors and they're still very much uh, interested in, in donating to this project. Uh, the conservation of a portion of the property is, is certainly very important to them and, and they'd like to see, um, so, you know, something move forward uh, relatively soon uh, was, was, I think, what they kind of stressed to us. Uh, I, I met with uh, David Nitre from the Outdoor Discovery Center and he's here with his uh, team. Uh, and discuss uh, conservation easements options. And uh, he had indicated, um, and, I, and I took a screenshot of it and placed it in your packet here, that the the areas in red here are areas that they're kind of thinking would be um, a good candidate for a, a conservation easement. It's it's more ravine-like, it's uh, they're, they're, they're steep grade, it, it would be more difficult to develop anyway. And um, so th that's their team's thought. Um, the actual trail areas themselves actually wouldn't be um, uh, an area where they actually would place a conservation easement, uh, at least that's not you know the initial recommendation or thought. Um, you know, what you want in your conservation easement, how, you know, how much you, uh, how you know, restrictive you want it to be or not restrictive, I guess is going to depend on um, really your preference as policymakers. Uh, and then talking with Mr. Herbert about, you know, impact on the Department of Public Works, you know, he doesn't see this as being overly uh, impactful or any more impactful than maybe some of your other trails that are, are within the city. Um, you know, every once in a while a tree may fall across a trail and they need to, you know, cut it up. Um, we don't do a ton of trail maintenance. Um, although the site is a little bit more uh, remote, uh, if we open it up, you know, we, we might, you know, subject ourselves maybe a little bit more uh, mischief or, or vandalism or something like that out there. Um, so those are, you know, those could be become costs. Certainly creating a, a parking lot area may need, you know, if it's gravel, it may need some ongoing maintenance and and uh, that, that sort of thing. But um, not seeing at least initially any, any you know, big concerns. Um, the other piece just to kind of touch on for, for is, uh, you know, the invasives that are out there, you know, this proposal would kind of combat some of that, but then, you know, we're still dumping material from the city and our brush and leaf pickup out there. And so we wouldn't want it, this perpetual huge cost of uh, continuing to, to combat that issue. So Scott's actually kind of been thinking through that and thinking of a way to, to prevent ongoing um, invasive issues. So the outdoor discovery team uh, is here to, to answer any questions that you have about their proposal and, and uh, what, what, what they're we're initially thinking and get your feedback and, and uh, go from there. Okay. Mayor, you, Mayor just can I ask a question? That yeah. it's, it's unrelated to ODC. Um, you and you both met with the prospective the donors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, did they indicate any sort of strings attached to this? No, they were just hopeful to have, um, you know, some of the land can serve. Okay. Um, they don't have uh, a preference on how much is. Okay. So, you know, we definitely have some areas where it could still be developed into a number of things, um, whatever we might have in mind over the years. But they do have a desire to have some of it conserved because that's why they chose this project 
over other projects that were presented to them um, because of the conservation aspect of it and wanting to save trees and keep it natural. And um, yeah. And so apart from protecting sort of some of that old growth, if you will, and the watershed where the creek is, yeah. uh, the city would have options in the future. We wouldn't have our hands tied if we wanted to take the property in another direction down the road. Do I, that, do I understand that correctly? That's correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, and real quick, um, this picture that we have here, mm -hmm. um, is that is that what we call the trailhead or this construction here? Is that part of what, what the 130,000 yeah. page nine? Yeah, so page nine and, and Mr. Knight trade is um, standing up. So I, I think that's just kind of a photo that's in a proposal. That's not necessarily they pull out what they're expecting. The... If you could come up. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. But that's not part of the uh, proposed 130,000 with paper, right? That's just something. No, we wouldn't, okay. we, wouldn't, we wouldn't need that type of boardwalk. That's just an example of a boardwalk running through a forested scene. So, okay. yeah, good question. Yeah, I think the, the idea here is to keep these trails fairly rustic and what they are, maybe formalize them a little bit more into a little bit of, correct me if I'm wrong, kind of clear, clear them a little bit, but I mean, but to I a great extent, they'll remain... But going to the packet, I mean, you know, I just I know. I think that I'm okay. like, oh, you look at that's that really go, nice. That's nice. Oh, you think that that's the path? Yeah, that won't, that won't be the path. Okay. <laughs> that, it's yeah, no. the so a trailhead, Gregory, if you look up at, on the screen right now when it says project components, uh -huh. so it would have like, you know, with, with the trails, you know, you walk in, there's a park, a gravel park, the, the, the you know, desired, I guess, outcome would be like right a here. gravel parking uh, area. If you yeah. look up okay. top where you see the trailhead, okay. where it says uh, trail left. left. Top left with photo. the sign, Gregory, up in the top left. Yeah, right, yeah right. that okay. would be the trailhead. Show you, you know, features yeah. of the trail, the roots of right. the trails, and right. all that. And that would be like in the when you first pull in in the parking area. Uh -huh. just tell you where to go, wayfinding, sure. than that. Sure. I'm sorry, David. No, that's okay. wonderful. <laughs> Um, I've had the opportunity to walk that property and it's absolutely stunning. And I understand why um, when the donors saw it, that they wanted to take the opportunity to donate towards mm. that, to keep it in its natural state as much as possible, um, especially those areas that you've highlighted um, that the Creek through there is gorgeous. The ravines through there, it's beautiful. So, um, but that being said, I know we have a lot of needs in our community and it allows for us to still um, explore those needs down the road. Certainly. Yeah. And I also just wanted to commend you folks. Some of what made those conversations with the donors around the importance of the property um, happened because you folks paid for the survey um, where we actually had the data. So um, because you folks enabled that, we were able to match with a donor's goal. Um, and if you hadn't have done that, those four thought, four thought steps, um, it would have been harder to have that kind of discussion. So you were ahead of the curve on that. I, I appreciate it. Can I ask, a, I want to um, ask a clarifying question to Scott. So if, if we go forward, especially with the conservation part, can we lock that so somebody can't come back and unconserve it? Um, I mean, I, I would be concerned about designating a conservation area that wasn't truly conserved my my concern and once again i'm not an expert on this my concern is not the red area i think the red area is completely okay. appropriate um given the, the sensitive nature of that area um I, i'm more concerned because there's been a lot of talk about other opportunities on that on that property for example some of the middle section is invasive pines and there are many other invasive species uh, you know there are other valid needs in the community we we know and thank you for your analysis by the way of the value of the property and what's actually possible from a residential standpoint which is which i think was quite um helpful to the to me at least um but you know there i think there's an open discussion i think you know by opening the trails letting people discover them i think we can have a better discussion as a community on you know should some of that be ball fields you know should should it stay as just a very natural walking path hmm. um is it going to make a great opportunity uh for um, dog walkers, people with horses, our cross country team. You know, I, I'm really excited about opening this up and, and allowing it to be a safe type of space for people to start exploring and, and understanding. I, I've said once again, I think more information is better for our community. And by opening up these trails, I think we'll we'll get a much clearer view on what the community wants us to do going forward. But I, 
I don't know anybody that wouldn't want to conserve and protect our watershed. Yeah, yeah I, I think that would be really, and and some of the, you know, uh, habitat there is, I mean, we would be nuts if we let that go away. And, and frankly, talking about my day job, the agency I work for, I think would have a very, would be very interested if anybody was even contemplating developing that close to uh, a, a tributary that goes into the Kalamazoo River. So there, there's that piece as well. Mm. So I, I think we might as well just do what's right and I think what the community, I feel the community would support the uh, conservation easement. Anyone else? Yeah, Madam Mayor, um, thank you very much for being here today. I have a lot of respect for the ODC um, and the work that's been done on this. The, the the thing I'm struggling with is that I really think we're putting the cart before the horse. And again, I want to thank Council Member Anderson for the email to what Mr. Dean said is, is that's helpful information to put some dollar value on what that asset, and this is a city asset, it is not a park. Um, there's an there's a value to that, and uh, out of all due respect to ODC and the SOAR um, analysis, that was a very small cohort of people that came to that meeting, and some great ideas, great information. I've read the report, uh, read all the information that was in the packet today, but th the presumption is is that we're already going towards this, and the community I don't think has made that decision yet. A small cohort has. What I would really like to do, and I think the city has really needs to do this, is hire a firm that is specialized in this kind of work is to perform a value analysis of the current property and complete a highest and best use proposal for presentation to the city and our citizens. Um, there are people in the community that view this as being dollars that were accruing that could be sold for funding other projects within the city. And I know that there's some discussion about not doing that because we have a commitment or we should have a commitment to protect, protecting and preserving that property. I am a preservationist. I am. I love the outdoors. But I'm also, I have to put on my fiduciary responsibility as a city council member and say, that's something that could provide value to the city in other ways. I guess my response to that, uh, I, oh, please go ahead, sir. Council member Dean. I think we're putting the cart before the horse. And I really think we need to engage all the citizens of Saugatuck to understand what their ideas are for the best use of the property. This could very well be where everybody wants to go. I just don't feel like everybody's on the same page on this quite yet. And no, no, do, no disrespect against the work, because if we were going to go down this path, I can see where ODC would definitely be our partner on this. I just don't think we've got, I just think we've got the cart before the horse on this. Go ahead, Scott. Well, well again, uh, we have a $130,000 horse that's being offered to us for free. Um, that horse will take us and the rest of the community on a journey with no strings attached, no cost to the city which will allow members of the community to experience this wonderful property. And I think we'll get a very good view from the community once this is completed on what next steps should be. And as, and as I think the mayor and the manager have confirmed for me, there are no strings attached to this $130,000 horse. So I'm ready to ride it. Madam Mayor. Um, yes, of course, I'm completely steeped in this information and, and uh, over the last year and a half, and we've had public meetings SOAR analysis, um, you know, the five-year plan. We've been through this. This is not the cart before the horse. This is us taking an opportunity. A healthy, thriving community does not sell off green space. We protect it, and that should be our role. Um, this is doing really the most good with the least, um, I'd say, commitment to where we still preserve our, our opportunities to do whatever we want with the actual property. And, um, but to just protect the, the the watershed seems like an absolute no brainer. We're getting the money. We're not dipping into our own funds to do this. We've got some, you know, donors that are lined up and ready to go and that doesn't last forever. So um, I'm full speed ahead on this. This has been a long time coming. This has not been something that we rushed through. Yeah, um, I Scott summarized a lot of what I um, believe. Um, this seems like a really smart first step. I mean, especially getting the, the just that land that is so, um, you know, I mean, you know, there's a chestnut, there's chestnut trees. I mean, so we need to conserve that. Um, it doesn't commit us to do other things. Um, but, you know, in addition to that, I mean, you know, you you look at the other options that have been explored. Um, most of them don't make sense. I mean, the you know um, EV charging and all of that. The carbon sequestration. I mean, from a, an ecological perspective, I mean, 
keeping as many of those trees, even, uh, I mean, looking longer, um, I will advocate more conservation. I mean, lighter, I can see some lighter development, but uh, the, the, you know, the benefit to the planet in our lungs um, is great. The recreation for people, I, um, is it Colin? Mr. Collins was here at our last meeting. We, we talked about it, just getting people out. It gives another, people another reason to come here, bring their families here, which are important. Um, so I just, I think um, for me, this is a, a no brainer. Um, and I, I just, I strongly, strongly, strongly support this and appreciate the work that ODC has put into it. Um, and there will be time later on to, to talk about and think about what else we might want to do, if anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. The dollar amount that uh, the 130,000 and do we have a dollar amount on any kind of commitment that there, that we're expected to pay from the city for any of this work or? Is it the 130 going to cover everything that that is proposed that we need to do? Correct. So yeah, I saw the add-ons like the electricity yep. and the the overlook. Um, if if that's something we wanted to do later on, or if there was a group that wanted to raise money to do it, that would be great. Um, uh, but uh, but I see it, I see it this way: we've had the property; it's sitting there. We've got the money. If we don't have to spend any money on these trails, why not? Uh, you know, we don't have any, we don't have, uh, we don't have anything binding us to, well, if they, if, you know, uh, 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 the, 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 uh, the township decided, you know, they're going to change the zoning or we change the zoning to that and we want to build apartments or whatever, if it could be done. So we still have flexibility with the property. Um, uh, I appreciate that. Um, but uh, I mean, if we get, if we don't have to spend money to do this, why not? Okay. Yeah. Uh, there will be some just like staff time put into like that this like applying for zoning approvals and there will be a little bit of legal time and reviewing conservation easements and things like that but i mean yeah and if you don't mind get okay, scott um would this is this a burden uh for more maintenance uh, uh on your pit on your plate um is it really you know i know i know you know we all want to we all want to support it you know but i, yeah, I just want to make sure it's not too much on your plate you guys are pretty the an the answer is i don't know um you know sometimes when we start <laughs> first and foremost you know i'm, I'm not going to be um you know well positioned to state whether we should do this or not i'm just going to kind of be right. neutral on this one but um you know I, I will say that there is a tendency over time you know sometimes there's unintended consequences that ultimately fall back on public works at times like mm. You know, I, I didn't expect to spend this much time on on the playground, for example, right, right now. Like we've been, you know, picking away at this since January and <laughs> uh, it's right. been a long time and yeah. we've spent a ton of hours on it. And so it, it's all going to kind of depend on what the expectation is. And as long as that expectation is managed properly. So like if it's truly rustic and the expectation, you know, is that there's a pretty low bar, <laughs> then certainly it's not it shouldn't be that much of an impact on public works. But you know, I also see two examples around the city where if somebody brings donated dollars, you know, and it, especially if it's in somebody's name, you know, that we, we want to honor, honor and respect, if that property falls, you know, subpar to what the standard might be, it may be construed as disrespectful, you know, and so I don't know, we'll see. I, I don't see how, I don't see an issue at this moment, but I think there's certainly potential <laughs> to, right. as long as it isn't managed properly, to or if public works isn't given the resources, you know, additional resources right. for whatever the expectation might be in the future, sure. um, then yeah, it will be more difficult on us. But as long as those two uh, items run parallel with one another, that there is that, you know, I think we have a, a group of people that's always very courteous of public works and what our, what our responsibilities are. And as long as that's in the back of everyone's mind, then at, at this moment, I don't I don't see why it would be a big deal. Yeah, of course, we don't have a crystal ball, but I would like to have some kind of ballpark as to, you know, exactly, you know, how much it would it cost to maintain it? Well, I can tell you like the John Woolham Trail, you know, all the trails that we have over across the river, virtually almost zero time is spent over there. I, I ran up in those dunes, you know, with a chainsaw before and got logs off of paths and whatnot. And basically like, maybe a, a couple of days worth of log clearing before the Mount Baldhead challenge when people are really kind of scrutinizing the condition of it, okay. then we spend a little time out there. But besides okay. that, they're they're natural and people expect that. And, 
you know, there's roots that you're going to trip on and, and, you know, roll your ankle on. And, um, that's just, that's nature. So, and, it, it, and as, as part of this is, you know, throughout through the year and a half that we've been exploring this, Scott and I've had lots of conversations about that and my whole expectation. And I think that of the PPW and, and what we've got in front of the donors net is it would be a very natural trail, just like the John Willem. So when we talked, I'm like, my expectation would be the same level of care and maintenance for the John Willem trail, which is negligible. Okay. And um, I don't see how that would be any different out here. And that's certainly been sustained for many, many years. Okay. And uh and I, I mean, just if I could add, um, I think, you know, if we open it up, uh, there's the opportunity. And Scott makes a great point about cost to the city. Um, but I think also there's opportunities. Um, this two and a half mile potential loop is uh, could be very exciting to the high school cross country team. Uh, they are very active and, and they could certainly maybe help us with with maintenance and things, that it, particularly if we, we allowed them to shift over because uh, you know, we've got the thing on, well, they have, you know, the course now on the other side of the, uh, of the road you know, over by the dog park. Mm -hmm. This is significantly nicer property. I've been taking the dog on the, um, the, the township trail and it's, it's nice, but this is spectacular. Mm -hmm. uh, we, this would make a great cross country course. Uh, all, connect. The connect and they will connect. The other yes. important yeah, thing. yeah. We have yeah. John Vanderbeek on yes. the show and he That's right. excited for them yeah. you know, because it yes. wants to connect. And also there could be a revenue source with cross country meets. There's parking there. You could have, uh, we yeah. could have a revenue source with uh, cross country meets there. That's been I, suggested too. Again, but this is just down the road. If you do that and you, yeah. So I think once again, as we experience it, there's that opportunity. Um, it's extremely well suited for winter cross country skiing. Mm -hmm. We could look for a vendor to, you know, put a trailer with cross country gear. They could rent it out. They could then pay back the city, and we could we could start to actually, you know, not only get this property back into productive use, but it, we may even be able to, not only through the volunteer uh, side of it, we may be able to find some vendor that wants to run a cross country course there and rent rent skis, which would then be great for the business community because there's not a ton of stuff to do here in the winter. Uh, I would I would urge every everyone. It's not winter anymore, but go up to um go up to Pigeon Creek up in Ottawa County and and look look at the Pigeon Creek cross country course. Uh, I'm sorry, cross country ski course. Uh, it's it's fantastic, and there's just a lot of opportunity. And imagine suddenly, I know you know with climate change, our our winters aren't what they used to be, but to give people an outdoor recreation opportunity in the winter, you know, it could be a source of revenue for the city. And it could also uh, be very beneficial to the business community. It's shoulder that season, in the yeah, precisely. Precisely. Are there any? Go yeah, ahead, Holly. Yeah, one more point I forgot to make earlier. Um, this is also really consistent with our master, the tri community master plan mm -hmm. um, is really, you know, being mindful of, uh, in addition to neighbors in our neighborhoods, um, having, you know, protecting and preserving our, our green space. So, okay. Any other thoughts before we move on? Yeah, Madam Mayor, I will be brief. One is uh, this is a perfect opportunity for the city to develop a donation policy. I've mentioned that to the interim city manager on a couple of occasions. The city really needs to have something in place that we can help guide decisions when people do come to us and present ideas for money. Um, I think that's just incumbent on us as a professionally run organization to have that in place because that will help guide us. And two is, despite the comments that there's no strings attached, there is a string attached to this. And that's a requirement to have a conservation easement, which will change the value of this property for future use. So there is a string attached. If, if I understand correctly, that is one of the requirements from the donors, right? Is that a conservation easement goes into place? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, just yeah. that Mr. Dean made a, a really good point that it would, I, I think it would be very tough to get that permitted. And let's, I mean, when they're, I mean, the, I mean, again, read through the inventory of habitat, the trees, um, we, I, I think we would be irresponsible to not conserve that. To Holly's point, if I may, um, I did have a conversation with the Land Conservancy of West Michigan. This property score is very high, and it's unusual for that to happen. It scores very high, and what they would look at is endangered species and uh, in, in the fauna and flora. It's it's a, it's a very unique property that uh, that we are uh, charged uh, as guardians of. That's my view. Anyone else? All right, let's move on then. Thank you so much for thank being you very here. much. Thank Appreciate you, David, it, all your work on it. Yeah. Um, we're moving on to item. 
I, I, I'm sorry, Mayor. Oh, um, sure. I need to be excused. Oh, yep. spoke earlier. Yep, thank you. Um, but I will be zooming in. Okay. I'll be watching all of you. All right. Hey. Good, good, good luck with the you. internet. Yeah, <laughs> good luck. Thank you. Are you sure you can zoom without your internet? Uh, with oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll move on to item 6C, proposal to provide architectural and engineering design, bidding, and construction administration services for the Mount Baldhead restroom building replacement. This is on page 99 of your packet. And John's here. Hi, John. Good evening. Good I'm here in you. person today, not because it's a gorgeous day in Saugatuck, but because uh, we just finished paving Bridge Street. Um, okay. oh, oh, on. Fantastic. Hold on. <laughs> yep, still some work to do along the shoulders, but you would not recognize it if you drive down there. Oh, Can I ride my bike on it tonight? Absolutely. You're going to go much faster than you would have a few <laughs> weeks ago. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, shifting gears to the topic at hand, um, Mount Baldhead restroom, we've been working on in various forms and fashions for several years now, at least in this most recent iteration. Um, after the AT&T findings kind of pushed us in a different direction, we prepared a new concept that kind of built on some of the ideas that were in that original concept for a standalone city restroom building that would be replacing the existing building in its uh, same footprint by and large uh, to try and protect those cultural resources that were discovered as part of the AT&T due diligence work. Uh, this proposal basically uh, is uh, design bidding construction services to deliver that project. Um, what has what has been uh, envisioned with those with those renderings? It's a fairly simple uh, two uh, unisex stall uh, restroom with some maintenance area, um, bottle filling station, uh, little sidewalk pad, concrete pad in front of it. Um, we've discussed uh, either including uh, heating it over the winter or at least providing the opportunity to retrofit it later on and make that simple. We would be connecting it right to the water and sewer services that are there. So there won't be a lot of trenching and excavation required. We can kind of keep that footprint fairly tight uh, for what we're doing. And that's in in a nutshell, what, what uh, we're looking to do. Okay. Any questions? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Madam Mayor. Thank you. And, and by the way, thanks uh, council member Baldwin for sharing these um, uh, preliminary plans with me early on the, on in the process. I'm excited by this. I'm a, huge fan bald head it's 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 in my dna and um i'm in support of the project um i did bring up and i think several others have brought up i think we need to challenge ourselves to get a bit of a more better design in the bathrooms and the reason i say that is because the current ones which i think were built i mean no one quite knows when they were first built wood building um very rustic kind of fits in with the pavilion which is next door on a, on a, on a cement slab i'd love to see a design that looks closer to what we have today as opposed to a brick, which was, you know, maybe fitting with a pump house. But I'd, I'd really like to see us get just up our game here and just really try to, because as you pull up to that, what I would like people to say is, hey, it looks just about the same, but they open the door and like, oh my God, this place is new. That's well, really what I would so say. want the building materials to be wood? Well, what I'm looking for is more of an, a concept and appearance. I think there's been some others in this room that made the same comment that we should be looking at something that's more in keeping with what's there already. Upgrading, of course, but keeping it in the same style. And I'm not saying wood necessarily, but something that's in keeping in style with what's there because it's very rustic looking. And I would like to see us get to something like that. This this looks your, very utilitarian. Your earlier point, but your earlier point though that brick was intended to match I mean there was thought put into this. It's, it's mm -hmm. brick was intended to match the pump house and the museum there. Understood. And that's where they yep. brought it over. Yep. And it's just a more I mean obviously the in in we have we're not on it yet, but when we go through so there's renovating and upgrades, right? I mean, bricks last longer than wood. The three little piggies know that, right? <laughs> so <laughs> the bricks uh, are in, in when, but, but when we do the decking up on the top of Mount Baldhead, we're going to want to use composite. We're not going to use wood and we're going to want to, you know, update mm -hmm. the um, augers, that, the things that go in. So this is, this is an upgrade, but I mean, that there was, I want you to know that this was thought of, thought through. And, and we even had, you know, disagreement on the PPW committee too. Um, no one wanted to stay with wood, but um, the effort was to make it a better composite material and um, more durable. And the matching of the brick just seemed like the natural fit. And that's where our heads were at when we brought this to you. I just wanted to yeah, make that. I'm, I'm assuming a masonry structure, particularly on the inside, is easier to keep clean Warm. And, and maintain, retain heat. But, you know, obviously, you know, there's cement in, in the bathroom over there or brick or whatever. Um, I even... 
am seeing a copy of the roof line of the pump house in terms of the roof design. So uh, I think this is a very good start. Uh, I would absolutely defer to uh, Parks and Public Works for the final design, but I think make, you know, matching the color of the pump house, matching the roof, the roof contours of the pump house, which I th think has been done here. I, I think it would blend I in was, quite well. I personally was neutral on it. Like I, I just want it to be more sustainable. I don't want to replace it with wood. If we did something, I mean, there's cement board, hardy board, things like that. I can see that 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 would be a possibility. I'm assuming that that's about um, on par with what bricking yeah. it would be. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm certainly open to that kind of discussion that doesn't yeah, that, but I just I just want it to be something that's very durable. I would not want to replace it. With, I want it to be something that we can heat, something that is sustainable, and um, something that ties in somehow. It makes it look like it belongs there. Yeah, and and I'm not in disagreement. I'm just I'm trying to up our game here. I'm trying to think about, and I'm not the most designer. You don't think this is upping our game over well, what we got? Uh, <laughs> because I do. Yeah. So I always sound like I'm alone on stuff. How are you alone? Well, what I'm saying is that why not try to mimic what we have there, which is very rustic. It looks nice. People just expect. Do you want to mimic or do you want up our game? Helen, I'm just, please. Yeah. I, what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to say, can we do something that's a bit more, I don't know. And when you see it, you know it. That's kind of where I am. So the bathrooms today look very much in keeping with what we've had there, right? They clearly need to be replaced. So when we replace them, why not maybe try to do something that's similar to it, but also upgraded to make sure that it's going to be maintainable, that it's not going to, you know, require a huge amount of work from our DPW team, um, uh, and so forth. So I, I'm just, I'm just trying to kind of push the envelope on. Don, will the brick be the same color as the pump house? Yeah, all of the details Scott picked up on it, down to the hip roof and the slope of the roof, was all kind of. That was the intent. That doesn't need to be the intent. That's really a a decision for this group to. And this you know, will go in front of the. Like his... Doesn't really matter for us. We decide whether it meets code and and right. the you yeah. know, technical parts of it. And will this go in front of the historic district no. commission or not? No, okay. it's outside of their district. It's okay. The district. But you know, when when Russ and I were working on Mount Baldhead Radar Station, um, you know, to get potable water, you know, there's a little tap in the dirt. You know, right by the foundation of the wooden structure. I mean, we got potable water out of there. But I mean, uh, this is up in our game to have a hydration station and actually have drinking I love water. That. Uh, I love that building station. Climbing Mount Baldhead. I mean, that's part of my regime is, is climbing those things. And I always have to bring a bottle of water. I think other people are exhausted when they're, when, you know, and dehydrated when they do the steps. So uh, I, I know it's a change. I, I know that's a modern looking hydration station. You, you know, they didn't exist back in the day. <laughs> But I think it's a huge improvement, and I think it would be very much appreciated by visitors and the community. Yeah, I think it looks great. I think the pump house is really gorgeous, uh, matching the matching. I didn't pick up on that, to be honest, from the rendering. Um, but I'm sure in real life, it would be a very clear match to that, and I think that's a nice way to go. That is where the that's what that is where the PPW yeah. took it nice. down the road. Okay. Anything else? One thing I would offer, if if you want to go there, is we could we could create a similar rendering, maybe with some hardy board, some more rustic colors. If if you wanted to compare and contrast, if you like the direction, we can go with the direction. That's really you as a majority decision. One I, council, one council member that's no longer on the council mentioned uh, the ability to put like on one of the empty walls, uh, some sort of signage. trail map, signage, something. Um, and once again, maybe that, may, maybe maybe the design is just prepped for that. I don't know if, if you know, just to future proof it. If, if you know, for example, you know, you know, some donor wants to have a piece of art that's maybe like a relief of mm -hmm. the trail system, a relief of the, of, of the oxbow area, mm -hmm. you know, that might be, that might be, you know, nice just to be ready for that. Yeah. Um, but I, I think you guys have done a great job with it. Um, you know, if the brick can be color matched and distressed to the degree of the pump house and it blends in with that, I think that would be quite nice. Okay. Anything else? So, I mean, the other, you know, you know, certainly we could also run, you know, renderings or, you know, the plans by, you know, the historic district chair or, you know, ask if any members want to, you know, give you any particular feedback. We could certainly ask for that. I, I will say, you know, typically within the, like the historic district, like, you know, part of the guidelines is not kind of creating a false sense of history and that, you know, wouldn't want to necessarily just create something to look old, like let it be what it is. So um doesn't mean that you have, I mean, that a guideline within a historic district itself doesn't mean that you can't, but that's just something to consider too. Would you 
Councilman Gardner, would you prefer it like Hardy Board or what do you what would you suggest? Again, I want to make sure that it's understood. I am all in favor of the upgraded water and so forth to council member Dean's uh, point that that's very important. And that's, I'm not opposed to that. What I'm really kind of looking for, and again, it's, I'm not a design person, but I'd love to see a couple of different alternatives here because the pump house is a beautiful building. It's an old pump house and it's been maintained. It's been well taken care of. The bathrooms were built, who knows when, but they were built in a very rustic fashion, similar to the patio or similar to the picnic enclosure. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, when I pull up to that, it's going to look exactly the same, but it's all brand new. That's kind of where I'm going with this. So I, you know, as, as Mr. Moxley suggested, maybe there's a couple of different alternatives we can look at just visually to say, you're going to get everything else, but then here's just some different ways to look at it. And again, I'm not a design person. So I'm, I'm not either, but I have, I have from? the resources to make it happen yeah, if that's what this group to, wants. Yeah. Just have some just have some contrast. For sure. You know, this may end up being the exact design. So, but again, I am very on board with this project. I am very on board with it. So yeah, John, your your engineering proposal is specific to this, you know, rendering. It's it's I mean, as part of this engineering proposal, you could bring back those. Yeah, basically, we got to this point because council a year or two ago authorized kind of an overall planning mm -hmm. uh, budget for Mount Baldhead. So that's what the renderings were part of. We can go back to that and, and keep moving and, and do a couple more options for you folks to look at if, if that's... Right. Is Does that the group want several renderings as a whole? It sounds, like, it sounds like, if I'm understanding the council, there's a rendering that looks like the pomp house and there's a rendering that looks like the wooden 19... 30s bathrooms. I mean, that's kind of what I'm hearing. So do we need the two? I'm asking. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm very comfortable with what PPW and staff came up with, but, you know, I'm, I'll defer to the rest of the council if, if folks want to, you know. Logan, you want to see a couple of different? I like the podcast. Okay. Holly? Yeah, I'm fine with it. it. And if we had another render, I guess would another rendering cost us more money? I don't want to, I mean, I think the pump house is fine. And this is not a place where I would invest more money, but um, yeah. okay. I brought it. So yes, the pump house is good for me. Okay. Same with me. All right. Thank you, John. Great. All right. So we'll move on then to item. One. Yeah, go ahead. It's so, it's so beautiful. That area, you know, we all know over time has been a target for vandalism of some sort. Yeah. Um, what... You know, I hate to like straps and like ugly lights. What is that like? No, like, yeah. I'm sure that has, but like, what is the like final sort of like? about a bunch more of this thing. You know, I I was I attended the um townships parks parks meeting recently, yeah. and they have they have trouble with vandalism at <clears throat> Schultz Park. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that um that they that, that they're doing is they're going to install. They're only seventy five dollars a piece. I was I didn't even know this existed, but there's cameras that are solar powered, so you don't need Wi Fi and you don't need electricity. They have a chip in them, so you couldn't you couldn't do surveillance. You couldn't watch it while it's happening. Yeah, but it's if you have an incident, current. you can pop that chip in and find. Yeah. So those those exist, and the most expensive part of them, installing it was to buy the pole yeah. and install it. So you have to find a place to put it. But I think that it's it's probably a wise idea to start looking at some. I thought the same thing about the playground recently, where I, I just thought it might be a good idea to have some eyes on these things. I don't want to destroy the aesthetic, but like, yeah, yeah. protect the aesthetic. Of course, you don't. <laughs> last thing you want to do is this point. That's brick is like a good target for spray paint sometimes. Yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> It's a great question. Yeah, same same thought here. We we do have uh, utility poles on the other side that we might be able to mount something. Yeah. To, so we're not even mounting it to this building per se. Right. And the yeah. other idea is uh, they do make like an anti graffiti coating that can be put on uh, masonry to ooh. make it easier to clean up and and. Ooh, like I'd be that. down with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Put that in the bit. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. If there's nothing else, I'll move on then. All right. Thanks, John. Um, well, he's next. Okay, you are next. <laughs> so we're on to item uh, 6D, the proposal to provide engineering design and bidding services for Mount Baldhead observation platform replacement. Page 106. Yes. Uh, moving up the stairs. We are talking about the, <laughs> the top deck, basically. The top deck, there's a couple of retaining walls that were put in uh, around the same time uh, that the observation area went in. All wood construction, all about the same age and state of deterioration. Um, 
the same same process we we kind of went through some uh renderings the renderings look a lot like what it does today uh just with some improved materials enhanced materials um going to more of like a galvanized steel uh supports composite decking things that aren't going to you know that that are going to hold up to that it, it's a pretty harsh environment for mm -hmm. For wood, especially as as we've gotten better stewards of the environment, our coatings and our treatments for for preserving wood have gotten worse because all of those coatings and treatments were pretty hazardous to the environment. Sure. So, um, basically, this would cover design uh, and bidding. Uh, this one's a little more uh, kind of up in the air. When would we build it? So we, I didn't put construction in here. We would come back to you with a construction phase proposal. Um, this one will involve um, some critical dunes permitting. Um, so we'll we'll go through that process that has some uh, uh, clearance that we go through with, with the conservation district and then through Eagle. Um, yeah, from what you're going to see in the renderings there, it looks a lot like the footprint does today, just with, with new materials. Um, if we get into design and we want to make some tweaks, there's opportunity to do that. But we, by and large, we wanted to keep all the trees uh, and kind of the, the, the main layout of it seems to be what everybody likes. So it's a hot spot. We don't really want to change it unnecessarily. Okay. Questions? Yeah, uh, Madam Mayor, I want to thank the Parks and Public Works Committee for bringing this forward. I really respect the uh, effort that's been put here. I think everything is great. Saving the tree that's in that circle. I noticed that on the renderings too. Thank you very much. Um, there's a lot of items to be removed up there. So that's going to have to be, I'm sure, factored in the cost. There's a lot of wood that will be taken out. And that's, as we know, that property up there is extremely difficult construction environment. So that's going to be costly. Um, I did notice in the renderings, I'm not sure it represents reality, but the retaining walls that are there, some of them near the actual northwest, northeast corner of this are in disrepair. They've just, because of the erosion. Mm -hmm. So that's going to, I think something from an engineering standpoint, you're probably already thinking ahead. Okay. That side of the dune is moving. So anything built up there and you can actually, if you stand on it, you can see it, right? <laughs> for sure. For sure. Um, that has to be something we really have to be careful with because that dune is moving, especially with the erosion on that east side is of great concern. Um, there's a lot of equipment that's in there that will need to be taken out as well. There's just cement and different stuff. So I, I can just see even the demolition removal to be very expensive and 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 time consuming. This is great. I love the simplicity of it. Um, I've spent a lot of time up there and people really just want to walk up there. They want to stop, look around. They want to see what they can see from there. You know, make sure the trees are trimmed. That's something I know Scott and his team do every year to make sure you have the views. I mean, simplicity, less is more up here for me personally. The other thing that does come to mind, uh, so, so anyway, back to my first question, is there going to be any work done on the retaining walls, John? Because I noticed in one of the renderings on the west side, it looks like there's new walls there. Maybe that was just for representation. The the intent was to replace basically all of the retaining walls that kind of support that observation deck. Yep, that would be the two. They're almost like a, a funnel. They're kind of arranged like a funnel on the, it would be the west side. The, the yeah, because there's a huge wall. And there's another one, yeah, kind of where you described it, I think, in the northeast. Yeah, and for those that maybe don't know the history up there, that wall was actually the top of the sand. So in other words, the sand gets blown out every year, and Scott and his team have to actually go move sand up there to restore it. So it actually was level, as it shows in the renderings here. It's actually level. And that is something that the city actually has to work to maintain because of the just moving dune. Um, so the retaining walls themselves, I, I I don't recall what the intent was to try to keep that all under control. It really didn't work. I mean, over time, we can see it didn't work. Um, so those are just some of the factors I think about. The other thing, too, is with the radar station itself, which is on the National Historical Register places, we have a sign up there. You perhaps have seen it. That's a It was supposed to be temporary. It's now been there for three years. So um, temporary with a small T. Um, what I'd like to see eventually is have something that we could actually mount something here to have people, because a lot of people are using that to understand what the radar station is. So we should use this as an opportunity to educate people about what they're looking at, and also maybe even some thoughts about on the actual um, um, actual uh, lookouts themselves. You know, you go to a lot of parks where they'll have what you're looking at over the view, right? I think this is a great opportunity to continue to encourage people to understand the history of this place, as well as the respect that it deserves for the use in the past by, you know, the tribes and, and others. This has a lot of significance for a number of different communities. So I think we need to be respectful, but number two is help people understand what it is that's up there. 
one of the um, big one of the big uh, uh, initiatives that the PPW is undertaking is is good wayfinding and explanation and uh, and we intend to work with ODC and, and a lot of that. So absolutely, that's included in in this endeavor. And the, oh, and the friends of Mount Baldhead will certainly be able to participate with getting some signage up there and having you know helping to encourage that that education. So it, it's just amazing to me how many people actually don't know what that is and they've learned through the signs that we put up there. So. I would. Scott, you were going to say something. Just a quick question, and maybe I missed it in the uh, materials. Um, like, if you look at page one eleven, um, it looks like you're also going to repair the retaining wall on the west side that kind of supports the radar station's perimeter, which is great because that's in bad shape as well. And just a uh, the material, you're not going to use sheet pilings. You're going to use some sort of masonry or. What, that, I, I can't that, know is, what that is yeah that's a good question that's to be determined one of the ideas i have that we've got to vet out is there's kind of a live retaining wall system where you get it's it's kind of like a wire cage it's almost like the like the, yeah yeah okay. like those and you fill them with soil and you put plantings on the face of it i think that would be a good opportunity perhaps we need to vet it out from a technical standpoint see if that would work that was one idea just to kind of make it blend into the the dune a little better so you won't really see it as much um, but yeah, all options are on the table in terms of how that would be constructed. All right. Stay tuned on that, but thanks. All right. And, and, and just, uh, back to the comment that we had about the other renderings for the, um, uh, Blake and, uh, Blue Star, this is definitely something we need to get out in front of people now just to get them thinking about this. I mean, I don't think there's going to be any opposition to this. I think there'll be a lot of ideas or maybe things that we haven't thought of that people may say, well, what about this? What about that? I even had a resident a couple of years ago, knowing this was coming, said, hey, can we put a yoga pad up there? Now, there looks to be a lot of space there to put a yoga pad down, but these are the kinds of ideas that our community will come up with. And I'd love to get this out outside of where we've already gone to just, you know, whether it's a sign up there, I don't know, something to just tell people what's coming and look for ideas because I'm sure there's some other great ideas out there. Okay. Anything else? All right, John, thank you. Great. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks John. John. All right. Uh, item 6E, hardscaping and right-of-way request. Uh, we've talked about this numerous times, that this is on page 115. We're finally to the point where they have a, uh, they put in an application for permission to have it there. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so just a, a, okay. a quick bit of history. You know, this property and a neighboring property were kind of what uh, led to uh, your request to kind of take a look at uh, updates to um, your streets and sidewalks ordinance and kind of uh, create some more formal regulations around uh, hardscaping within the right of way. Uh, and then once that process was complete, the idea was that, um, you know, folks would start applying and then we could start making some decisions based on that policy. So the, the policy that the city council approved essentially doesn't allow for, um, you know, rock uh, or stone walls uh, within the right of way. So, you know, it's kind of looking forward, um, but the ordinance uh, allows you to approve uh, an installation that occurred prior to the policy being implemented, but it's still at your discretion ultimately. And so uh, because of the first one, I just wanted to bring it to you to, to take a look and, and, and workshop. Um, it, it's kind of an interesting uh, request and, or timely request in that, you know, you're, you're looking at a, uh, uh, studying Park Street in more detail that has a number of encroachments into the right of way. And, and as I had our engineer re review this for any feedback that he had, um, you know, it was like, hey, you know, prior generations probably thought, you know, we're not going to have a, a need at some point to, you know, reclaim maybe that space for certain improvements. Um, and now here we are today and it, it's going to create, you know, some challenges, you know, allowing this could have that kind of impact uh, in the future, maybe not on, on as you know as grand of a scale, considering uh, the way that this particular area is is currently developed. Um, we don't have any immediate plans uh, for this area, although there could be some opportunities for for parking uh, related improvements in this area. Um, so, just wanted to bring it to you to to workshop if 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 uh, you are uh, okay with uh, approving a, a permit to allow the installation to remain. Essentially, there would be conditions. One of the conditions would be certainly that if, if we're going to make improvements in that area, uh, then it would need to be removed. And um, you know, from my perspective, once it's removed, it shouldn't be reinstalled. Um, and just to, to give you some perspective, just I mean, this one is pretty you know is it, extensively into the right of way. If you look at the survey on, on page one nineteen. So the surveyor kind of noted where the stone walls at in comparison to their property line. So you can see just 
how far outside of their property lines it is. But then if you, you know, kind of look at the photos that- Sorry, how many feet is that approximately from their property line? I can't. Um, oh, I can work on getting you a more specific measurement. Um, I see, so I, I'm sorry, I see the scale down here now too. So it looks yep. like at least 15 feet, right? Yeah, I would say, yeah, probably closer. Oh, to, probably 30, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> so then you're looking at, at the photo, like on, uh, yeah, uh, what does page, it do? Just basically creates more yard for them. Page one twenty one. It kind of shows you an actual photo of oh, where see. the wall is at in comparison to the the you know the pavement. But then you can see, um, yeah, kind of the, that yard space. Yeah. Yep. Where is the I can't see the fire hydrant. Yeah. Fire hydrant is a very good indication to you of like oh. how much. Where? Oh, oh wow. Right. Yeah. Property in the property that's just to the south of that has an issue as well because the, yeah. they have a fence, an actual rod. It's not rod iron, but it looks like a rod iron fence, yep. which actually I think is encroaching. And there's a bunch of trees and a bunch of other plantings that have been put in city right away. So there's this property plus the one next door that are. Yeah. The current owners, and, and I, I believe them when they say this, that the current owners bought the property, you know, within the last year and a half or so, and, and they weren't the ones that installed it. Looking at the, the Google imagery sometime you know, after 2019 and when they bought it, that it was installed. Um, just somebody, you know, brought it to our attention last year, and that's when we kind of started looking into it. So. I was just going to ask, so why, why is this in front of us now? Because someone, because of the new ordinance. Yeah, well, we received a complaint early last year, which then led to... It was a complaint because there's not enough parking on the street. Or exactly. exactly. Apparently, there have been some parking signs there at some point, and the parking signs just saying that you could park there um, disappeared, and somebody was upset that that parking had gone away, and uh, they said that, hey, there's now, you know, a wall installed there, and, and you know, who allowed that, and so, mm. yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I've had some residents ask me questions because I, it, you can't see it on the picture, but on the west or east side of this picture, up there, there's some railings that are there. There are actually no parking signs on that side of the street. And it was mentioned to me that there were parking signs on this side of the street to let people know they could park there yep. and those were removed. So even though that's not part of this discussion, it's something we should be talking about to actually let people know they can park there. I mean, you know, I, I like that you've got some conditions in here. Um, I'm generally supportive. I'm just wondering if we need to add another condition just so they don't make improvements that make it harder for this to be undone, such as trees like, like Councilman Gardner <laughs> mentioned. Um, because, you know, there is a huge opportunity for, for increasing this, our city parking, which is a critical need in this area in general around the Peterson Preserve and, and all, along those streets. Uh, you know, we're desperate for parking. You know, if, if we ever tackle, what is it, Lucy Street and a sidewalk, suddenly, it's not know, a good example. suddenly, you know, it becomes much more walkable. I mean, it's a very easy walk from the Peterson Preserve area. And I, you know, I bet if, if we put the engineers on it, you'd be amazed the amount of parking spots <laughs> that, that on city property that, that mm -hmm. could be achieved. So I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sympathetic to their, their plight, but I, you know, I, 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 I would, I'll defer to council, but if, if, if there needs to be another condition, so they're really clear that, you know, the, the direction the town is going, we're becoming more and more busy. Parking is becoming more and more of an issue that, you know, this is something that's likely going to happen. I would hate to see them invest in trees or, you know, when it says they're going to maintain, they invest in maintenance activity that, you know, sprinkler system that suddenly they lose because, you know, you know, this is, uh, this is grossly on city property based on where I'm seeing that fire hydrant. I can't believe where the fire hydrant is. <laughs> 3,000 square feet. Of mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, I would suggest, while well, there's a new home going in on the corner that you can yeah. just barely see it. Um, that's something I've mentioned to interim manager Cummins in the past, is that property owner should probably also be made aware of this uh, for sure. Because um, I do know, and I've talked with some people that actually have lived near this property for a while, and the property owner, when they bought it, said, no one ever told us we were encroaching on public property. So that statement, I've heard the same. The property just to the south of it, too, I think we should be actually reaching out to them and saying, we're putting an agreement in with your neighbors for city right of way. We should probably be talking with you about hardscaping in your space, too, and the new property going in. Yeah, I just think we should look at this holistically for the entire street. Yeah, it was, a, it was a property of the South, actually, that was the, the first enforcement case that was, was brought to our attention. So uh, they are in the process of applying as well. 
Um, and then the property owner to the North building, the new home, I, I have had uh, conversations with him and, and he is aware of the, the new policy. I mean, the plantings that he has planned um, that will be in the right of way are, are allowed by your, your new policy it was you know, grass, flowers, you know, light landscaping related items, not full out. I kind of feel like they should know that say two, three years down the road, this is, you know, we might be making yeah, improvements I, 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 I <laughs> and, certainly... and they shouldn't be making plantings in those areas. It's one thing if it was there when they bought the house, but people who are putting new plantings in shouldn't even be putting. Yeah. I, I'm sympathetic to, you know, Scott said to their plight of, you know, they didn't install it. They bought the house with it like that. Mm -hmm. That being said, when you buy a house, you get a survey done. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know? I mean, it should have shut so, up on the survey. Yeah, you you definitely, there wasn't completely eyes wide shut but, on this. But um, as we're progressing and talking about Park Street, I'm very sensitive to that too. I'm, I'm going to be a big advocate for, you know, we, we talk about Park Street extensively at PPW. And it's well known that, I mean, the city is moving in on people's property, the people are moving their property. And I mean, I think the worst argument in the world is that, well, it's been like this for 50 years. Well, I'm glad you've enjoyed the use of the city property for 50 years, <laughs> but it's time for that to, you know, to cease at some point. So I worry about the perceived precedent. I, I, I believe in our council with the SEL's ability to protect us in whatever kind of agreement that we could perhaps enter into, but I don't like us creating these agreements when so then it turns into like picky choosy and who applies and who doesn't and is his plantings less important than the person's you know right. fence that was there before they sold the property i don't love the i don't love the way that that how you are next i yeah i'm kind of in that spot too it's sort of i mean especially with the parking it, it seems like we just exception our way into a bigger jam and I will give this more thought and don't want to be a hard edged person, mm -hmm. but part of me, it's like, why would we, uh, at some point we have to. Yeah. Parking such a premium. It, it actually makes it really inhospitable to park in part. I'm sorry. I spoke at a turn. Please Logan. Oh, wasn't there. I'm looking at Google maps, street maps. It wasn't there in 2019 when they went through. And there is a, there's a very, like there's a city park, the parking this side of the street. Okay. Mm -hmm. The previous resident, tear down the city sign that said parking was okay there and then put a wall 30 so, feet in city property. I'm guessing. That's, uh, can't that's say, why can't we received sure. the complaint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so, what it appears to be. Yeah, that's what it appears to be. I that's me. completely nuts. Well, I, you know, I think... <laughs> I, I bet. I'm going to turn this sign. Right. I, you know, right. Uh, I don't want the stop sign here. I'm just going to take it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, Go I ahead, think, Russ. I, think, I, I would yeah. just add to the survey comment my understanding is that the people that bought that house paid cash for it. So they probably didn't get a survey. Ah. Yeah, they didn't have a survey. Yeah. They didn't do a survey. I mean, when I sent them the GIS they imagery, they were, they were shocked. I'm not sympathetic so. to that. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I'm not, I'm just saying that buy a house. That's the situation was that, and that's bit, no excuse, but yeah, yeah, I was, I was more sympathetic to this, you know, because they bought the house and I thought, well, you know, until we make plans for parking, you know, but the fact that <laughs> parking signs got removed and then this happened, this feels like, and it, and it really did take away parking along that street. Can a fire truck even pull up to that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, you get from the other side, I guess. Yeah. But... And there's still parking there. I mean, you can see the shoulder. There's plenty of places. Yeah, but it's, park, it's inhospitable park to parking, and that's city parking. I don't, it, you can yeah. look at that and you you know that's inhospitable. I don't, I don't like that. Can you fit a car? Yeah. Can you fit a full mm -hmm. car along there oh, yeah. without hitting a yeah. door on the. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, do we want to ask? Ryan to work with council to maybe make this a little bit more, you know, this isn't going on forever. You know, this is, you know, we'll be, we'll be re reviewing this in a whatever number of uh -huh. years. I mean, you know, once again, I would hate to like throw a grenade, you know, into, into a, a perfectly innocent residence situation where like, Oh my God, now I've got a contract and I got to get this out. City wants it <laughs> out in 30 days. Right. I don't think we want, I don't think we want to do that, No, but we may want to say, look, you really should think he, you know, as you plan your landscaping, as you make improvements on your home, you should probably be prepared if you're going to, if this is your forever home, that the way things are going in town, mm -hmm. this is probably not going to. Yeah. Be, so why would we sign an agreement that says it's fine for now? I don't it, like it, that. This is short term rentals all over again. I mean, we're kicking a can down the road. Um, I mean, there's part of me. It's like, if, you know, if we're going to do this, why are we postponing it? I mean, to quote my friend and 
colleague, Mr. White, it's nuts. <laughs> so, 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 what, so what happens then? Okay, let's, I mean, we might as well explore it then. What happens if, because I was sort of approved with conditions, but what happens if we deny and we just sort of let it sit until we want to do something? Is that the better solution legally? I, in terms of setting precedent? It, it would be against the ordinance. So then they would be. Right. I mean, that's essentially yeah. last year, the position that we took was that, um, it was installed without permits and you know, wasn't, you know, authorized to be there and that they needed to remove it. And, um, you know, when we brought those things to you and, and you asked to kind of go through, a, um, creating a policy and a, an updated ordinance and then reviewing these on a kind of a case by case basis, it looks like Jake did unmute his. <laughs> yeah, I, I can provide a little more context. Um, so you, you can't adversely possess government owned property. So it's not like someone could gain title to this. I think the possible issue that you might be looking at is when the city decides to enforce its ordinances, there could be someone trying to assert a defense of selective enforcement, meaning that I am similarly situated to someone else in the city, but you're treating me differently. And then it's kind of on the city to have to distinguish why we are enforcing our ordinances against this person, but not this person. Um, and so from my perspective, having some sort of revocable license agreement kind of legitimizes something being in the right of way um, with the ability of the city to attach conditions and make it really clear like this agreement is only good for as long as we say it is and we can revoke it for any reason we see fit. Madam Mayor, may I ask a question? Go ahead. Um, would we then need to <clears throat> start, do we just wait for complaints or then do we need to start looking at every place that we know is encroaching on the cities right away and so, creating these agreements for every one of those. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, I, oh, go ahead, Ryan. Well, I think when you asked me that very question, when you were looking at updating your ordinance and your policy was that we would take these on a complaint base. I don't think we, we, I mean, if the policy direction is that you want that done, we can do that, but that would, that would take an extensive amount of resources and time right, to, right. to do that. Um, you know, and, the the fact that a, an ordinance violation has a complaint is a rational basis to treat that violation different than another violation that no one's complaining about. So that would help the city get out from under that that selective enforcement type defense should it arise. I mean, how do we make this equal to what we're going to be dealing with on Park Street? You know, I mean, there's lots of hardscaping that's in the city right of way now on Park Street. So how, what is the consistent way to handle this? Because yeah. that's, that's going to be a huge issue. I, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that we go slowly on this because of some of the situations we may run into on Park Street and other areas where I think the city has um, not done a really good job on this just due to resources and uh, attention to it is where people start to put not just hardscaping, but softscaping into spaces. Like they'll put up their, their poles for snow removal. They'll put up small rocks. So yeah. Scott and his team see this all over town. If the city were more consistent on making sure that that wasn't happening, then people would get the message that we are really trying to protect because as the attorney said, they cannot get adverse possession. However, from their perception, well, they didn't remove this. So that means that I'm getting this, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think the city just, and that's a resource issue. That's just an enforcement resource issue. We've not been consistent. So I think that's where I'd like to see us get better at is just consistent enforcement of what we have. So people can't do the things or stop doing the things that they've been doing. And um, it, it's a long road. It's not just a boom, we come down on it. Mm -hmm. Well, if someone's complained, then shouldn't we consistently enforce it? I mean, if somebody complains and somebody's in violation, that would argue that we would not sign an agreement like this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, interesting. I mean, whenever I get a complaint and, you know, I think of a few of them last summer when somebody did, you know, place something out, somebody complaining was brought to our attention and their very first comment is, well, my neighbor has it and my neighbor was allowed to do it. Oh, my. <laughs> so it's kind of. Right. Yeah, this is who knew this one would be the, yeah. uh, the <laughs> one of the more tricky ones. But um, I again, I'm sympathetic, but um, that's a lot of a lot of property. You don't have to decide today. It's something that you can think about some more. Um, that's good to you know, know. We can bring it yeah. Monday if you're not ready to vote on it. Monday, want some further yeah. thought on it? You can you know decide to, to spend a little more time thinking about I mean, it. We got a lot on today, so I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right.
Okay, so this uh, moves us to, along uh, to something where, uh, with all due respect, uh, <laughs> our interim city manager will be leaving us as we uh, talk about the city manager position. Um, so thank you. It's been a blast. You're right. welcome. Thanks Good for you. Well, all your work and discussion on this. Do we right. do public comments first? So, uh, no. Discuss this one in open session. Right we just so we have this open session page. without mm -hmm. Ryan here. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> this part we are. If you all wanted to go to page, actually 128 for me. Uh, let's see. The right fit? Yes. Okay. Is everybody there? So we're, we're not going to one. Okay, I, I see. No, I the right fit is what okay. we put yeah, out there. The in this. why I'm having you go to page 128 is because there was a desire uh, by some council members that wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, what we would like to see in our next city manager. Um, we can certainly do this in closed session, but if you wanted an opportunity to talk about this publicly, I'm giving you this opportunity. So if anybody would like to speak, um, this is what was sent out and this is what um, the candidates um, have looked at. Um, if there's anything you'd like to add and you wanna say publicly about this, by all means. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. I was, I was one of those council members that asked for this conversation. I think it's a very appropriate to have an open session. Um, I really look for a candidate, candidates who bring demonstrated experience in a city manager position in a town that is similar in size and scope to Saugatuck. Someone who's a very, very effective public communicator. Um, that's so incredibly important here in a small town. Um, that written verbal communications being have the ability to go out and meet people and really represent the city in a positive manner is incredibly important. I also think it's important to have a candidate of uh, finalists who are very good and skilled at developing people. Um, that's something that this city, um, in my opinion, really will need from the manager is actually has experience leading teams, inspiring people to get better at what they do, provide them paths to you know advancement, promotions, et cetera, within the city, you know, or even outside the city for that matter. So I, I'm really looking for an experienced candidate who actually brings experience in a role such as this to Saugatuck. Anyone else? Go ahead, Alan. I would, um, I, I actually disagree that somebody has to have had a city manager position. Um, for example, an interim city manager position would work for me. Um, I think um, good government experience and actually a broader range of experience um, is important. I completely agree on uh, being a good people manager. Um, yeah, I, you know, one thing I have heard, you know, people, they should be out more. And I I kind of put that further down the list for me. I mean, I certainly they need to have good relationships within the city and with staff, um, but you can't be out and about and be running a city, even a city the size of Saugatuck. So yes, they need to have great relationships, you know, no business owners and stuff. But in terms of, um, you know, calling on people and, you know, being out, it's, I just don't think we have the luxury of staff to be able to have our highest position doing that. And fortunately we are blessed with amazingly um, great staff who are out and about, um, you know, Jamie, Scott, um, who who do a good job, I think, wrapping the city. Plus it's our jobs as well to be out and about, so. Um, well, I, I agree with, with Holly in that I wouldn't want the right fit to exclude, frankly, someone who deserves a seat at the table, or who deserves to be considered. Mm -hmm. I don't know who the four candidates are, but I think, I think Mr. Cummins, has earned the right to be part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. That's my my opinion. I feel exactly the same way about Mr. Herbert. If if we were doing that, we're not. We're not. <laughs> but I would feel the exact. He's earned it. They both, you know. And I, I would not ha like this to be so prescriptive that it rules out someone. I mean, because we had the same we had the exact same situation, Mr. When I worked with Mr. Walsh, um, you know, Mr. Cummins didn't fit all of the criteria of a plan of a planning director. And there were a lot of people that were, um, um, they, they didn't think he had the qualifications. He's proved them all wrong and they've said as much. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I wouldn't want this to be overly prescriptive is, is I guess my point, because I do believe that Mr. Cummins deserves to be part of the discussion if he is not part of the four candidates. 
Okay. Madam Mayor. Yeah. A um, couple of things I, I believe is that um, I think it's very important that this person be very fair minded, um, treating people, and, and, and I mean that sincerely, treating everybody equally, council, constituents, whatnot. This person also is the number one person in charge of saying no. It needs yeah. to be able to do that yeah. to constituents, to staff, to council members. We are not going to always like what we hear coming from this person because they are the messenger and it is their job to tell you no. Um, third, and this this definitely sways me um, uh, toward the technical side, is I do, the more I think about what makes a good city manager, I think that a good city manager keeps us out of trouble. So they've got municipal experience and, and that's stated. Um, planning and zoning background. The big look. Look at our big things that we have in front of us that that we always come that we're always coming back to. How are we in trouble with the you know uh, floating home litigation stuff? It just it it shows up all the time. So to my mind, a good technical background in planning and zoning certainly fits that. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm happy to join this conversation. Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think executing tasks and leadership are two different skill sets. Um, and while maybe not exactly city manager experience, I would want to see some form of organizational leadership on a scale that is somewhat significant or on, on a similar scale. This is, we're appropriately under a microscope on this one, and we're going to need to make, be able to make an extremely defensible choice on this. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, if there's nothing else, uh, this was a great discussion and um, we will go to public comment before we go into closed session. Uh, so if anyone would like to come to the podium, please state your name and where you live and go ahead. Bobby Gaunt, 341 Main Street. Thank you for allowing me to be part of that discussion. Um, and I would... Um, um, I know you don't you don't underestimate the um, uh, the importance of the work you are about to embark on, and I think you all made really relevant comments in terms of the qualities you should be looking for. Um, so thank you for that. Um, what I do want to say, uh, additionally, is that um, I want to make sure that as chair of the Sagatuck Dunes Coastal Alliance, we are. We continue to be in support of your plan for the airport property. And I also personally strongly support that. So encourage you to continue. Um, I would also like to just suggest as I listen to all of your conversations about so many subjects uh, that we not forget uh, to always take into consideration, depending on what we're doing and where we're doing it, uh, traditional cultural properties. Um, so um, just having said that, and um, Helen, I'm sorry, I didn't say anything uh, yesterday relative to the park. What I wanted to say actually was um, most of you, I don't think were around when uh, back in 2003 and 2004, when we did the uh, art center. And I was so reminded of certain parts of that experience as you have experienced what you have in terms of the park. And what I said back then, and what I would have said last night, is that we are not building a nuclear power plant. We are building a park and a 21st century park. So uh, thank you. I, I went past the park today and it looks absolutely amazing. So thank you all for your tenacity and hanging in there and especially your leadership, Helen. Um, and two other minor comments that just occurred to me as I sat through this. Um, please, as you struggle with some of these issues in terms of where you land, um, please don't forget we have a tri-community plan. And we should be, um, uh, that should sort of be our North Star in terms of where uh, we come out on these issues. And um, finally, uh, and Jake, so don't listen. Um, <laughs> in terms of ordinances, um, and especially based on my experience on planning, 
as well as uh, chairing the um, alliance and working with local governments relative to ordinances. And um, I just always say, you know, either enforce them or change them. Okay. Um, but that is another sort of North Star for me in terms of um, how we run government. Okay. So thank you all. I don't underestimate the difficulty of your task all of the time. And I'm so appreciative, both professionally and personally, of all that you do. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks, much, Bobby. Bobby. That was so nice. Um, anyone else in the room? All right. Anyone online who would like to make public comment? Okay. Uh, you're not seeing any hands raised, Jamie? Okay. Uh, so then I would like a motion to go into closed session. If someone could read that motion. Yes, uh, I'd like to make a motion to enter into closed session to review and consider the contents of applicants who have requested confidentiality as permitted under the Michigan Open Meetings Act, MCL 15.268, Section 8F for the position of Saugatuck City Manager. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Uh, roll call. Anderson? Yes. Baldwin? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Stanton? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Um, has Gregory joined yet? Um, can you please ask um, the iPhone if that's him? I can't see the um, phone number, but that's who popped up last. Okay. Uh, Gregory, if you are the iPhone, um, maybe you could put your video up. Then we could see if it's you. If it's someone else, we will be saying goodbye. Text them. Yeah. All right. We'll just wait a couple of minutes. If if anyone needs, okay. If anyone needs to use the restroom, now would be a fine time. I would uh, like to make a motion to conduct public interviews to candidates number 12, 37, 40, and 41 for Saugatuck City Manager to be held on May 22nd, beginning at 3 p.m. Do I have a second? Okay. Russ has the second. And Anderson? it's a roll call. Yes. Baldwin? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Muncie? Yes. Stanton? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. All right. So that leads us to, uh, we have correspondence. You'll see those in your packet. Uh, now on to council comments. Uh, Holly, I'll start with you. Um, good, good meeting. Yep. I think that. Oh, I know. Uh, I was part of the community build, and uh, it's really cool to see that park take life. So, uh, hats off to um, PPW and all of the volunteers and all of us for giving it the green light. Excellent, Russ. No comment. All right, how or uh, Helen? Uh, just echo. Uh, uh, me member Anderson's comments and I'll say something more about it Monday night but the build went so well um if you haven't had an opportunity to go by and take a look at it do it don't get on anything it's not open yet <laughs> okay but uh restored my faith in the community I mean people were excited and joyful and uh they did a beautiful job and we finished ahead of schedule so all right once again congratulations on the build uh congratulations to Erica June Light she'll be opening up her little bakery next to Wicks Park Bar and Grill we're excited for that also, our second bakery, Retro Bakery. Don't forget to visit them when they open on Blue Star Highway. Um, also, um, don't forget to visit the Mother's Day Market at Back to the Fuchsia. Nice. We'll be making flowers. Flowers will be coming out of everywhere. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> well, they'll smell pretty. Uh, but uh, but uh, just want to let everybody know, happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thanks, Gregory. Logan. Hard to Two things. Congratulations to... The Lakeshore Health Partners uh, on the north side, they had their uh, open house today. Uh, that's going to be a really welcome addition to the community. Um, super small, kind of funny thing. Standing in the bathroom line downstairs during the break. We have gendered bathrooms here. Is that is that necessary? Like, can we, can we just change those signs or something? Um, that'd be kind of neat. So, <laughs> okay. Kind of an idea there. 
All right. Uh, coming from a straight man. <laughs> <laughs> um, at this point, uh, I would like a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All those in favor say yes. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.